you're scrolling through headlines and you see Jeff Bezos talking about building massive data centers in space, powered by unlimited solar energy. Ever wonder why the richest people on Earth are suddenly racing to move our digital world into orbit? Today, I'll explain why tech billionaires want AI data centers in space like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand whether this is the future of artificial intelligence or just an expensive fantasy. Most people think data centers are just big server rooms with blinking lights and humming fans. But here's what they really are, the engines of modern life. Every Google search, every Netflix show, every chat GPT answer runs through a data center somewhere. And these buildings are energy monsters. A single large data center uses as much electricity as a small city. With AI exploding right now, that hunger is getting worse fast. Training one large language model burns through enough electricity to power thousands of homes for a year. We're talking about a collision between unlimited AI ambition and very limited Earth resources. Now here's where space comes in. On Earth, data centers face three giant problems. First, power. They need constant electricity, and most grids can't handle the load. Some utilities are literally telling tech companies, we can't give you any more juice. Second, cooling. All those servers generate insane heat, so you need massive cooling systems that guzzle even more energy. Third, real estate. You need huge buildings in places with cheap power and good internet connections. Those spots are running out. But in space, there's no night, no clouds, no weather. Just pure sunlight hitting your solar panels 24 hours a day forever. It's the ultimate power source sitting right there completely untapped. This matters to you because AI isn't slowing down, it's speeding up. Every company on Earth is racing to build smarter models, bigger networks, faster tools. Your job might soon involve AI assistance. Your kids will grow up with AI tutors. Your doctor might use AI diagnostics. All of that requires compute power, and compute power requires energy. If we can't generate enough energy on Earth without melting the planet, the AI revolution hits a wall. Space data centers aren't just about tech billionaires playing astronaut. They're about whether the AI future you keep hearing about can actually happen. Here's where it gets wild, and the payoff will surprise you. Companies are already testing this. A startup called StarCloud launched actual GPU clusters into orbit. Real hardware. Real processing power. Another company, Crusoe, is experimenting with space-based compute for AI training. They're putting NVIDIA H100 chips up there, the same ones powering ChatGPT. This isn't science fiction anymore. It's happening right now, quietly. While most people are still thinking about Mars colonies, the race to space has shifted. It's not about rockets anymore. It's about compute. It's about who controls the infrastructure that runs the AI everyone depends on. And the companies moving first are gaining an advantage that could last decades. But here's what you need to understand about the challenges. Getting hardware into space is brutally expensive. Even with SpaceX driving launch costs down, you're still paying thousands of dollars per kilogram. Think of it like this. Shipping a laptop to space costs more than buying a luxury car. A single data center weighs thousands of tons. You'd need hundreds of launches just to build one decent facility. Then there's maintenance. On Earth, if a server dies, a technician walks over and swaps it out in minutes. In space? You need robots or replacement modules, or the hardware just dies and you lose it. No quick fixes, no easy repairs, and space is brutal on electronics. Radiation fries circuits over time, like leaving your phone in the desert sun for years. There's no atmosphere to protect anything. Tiny space rocks can punch holes through equipment at thousands of miles per hour. Every piece of hardware has to be specially built to survive, which makes it heavier and more expensive. It's like comparing a regular phone to a military-grade one. Same job, triple the cost. Then comes the distance problem. Light travels fast, but space is far. A data center in low Earth orbit is still hundreds of kilometers away. That means every signal takes a tiny bit longer to travel there and back. For training huge AI models overnight, that's fine. The model doesn't care about a few extra milliseconds. But for real-time stuff like video calls or gaming or instant search results, you'd notice the delay. It would feel laggy, like playing a video game on slow internet. Space data centers probably won't replace the ones on Earth. They'll handle the big, slow, power-hungry jobs, while Earth-based centers do the fast stuff. It's not one or the other. It's both working together, each doing what it does best. Now check this out, because this is where it gets real. Bezos has been talking about this for years, 
He says within 10 to 20 years, we could see gigawatt-scale orbital compute stations. Gigawatts. That's power on the scale of nuclear plants. He's not just dreaming. Blue Origin, his rocket company, is built around moving heavy industry off Earth. Musk is thinking the same way. Starship is designed to carry massive payloads cheaply. If launch costs drop by another factor of 10, the math changes completely. Suddenly, building in space isn't crazy. It's competitive. And when that happens, the companies that got there first control the infrastructure powering the next generation of AI. That's not just a business advantage. That's control over the technology that might define the century. This matters to your life more than you think. If the most powerful AI models end up being trained in space, the companies owning those stations control the future of intelligence itself. They decide who gets access. They decide pricing. They decide what gets built and what doesn't. Right now, AI development happens in Silicon Valley, in Seattle, in big cities with data centers nearby. But if the best compute moves to orbit, geography stops mattering. A startup in Kenya could rent space compute just as easily as Google. That could democratize AI, spreading power to anyone with an internet connection. Or it could concentrate power even more if only a few billionaires own the orbital infrastructure. The outcome depends entirely on who gets there first and what rules they write. And here's the twist nobody's talking about. Space offers something Earth can't. Total privacy. No government can walk into an orbital data center and demand access to servers. No local laws apply up there. Space is international territory, governed by treaties from the 1960s that nobody's updated. If you're training a controversial AI model, or handling sensitive data, or building something governments might want to regulate, space is the ultimate haven. That's exciting if you love freedom and innovation. It's terrifying if you think AI needs guardrails and oversight. We could end up with the most powerful AIs ever created, sitting beyond the reach of any government, any court, any democratic process. There's also the environmental angle, and it's not what you expect. Yes, rockets produce emissions when they launch. But once a space data center is up there, it runs on pure solar power forever. No coal, no natural gas, no nuclear waste, no massive cooling systems dumping heat into rivers. If we're serious about fighting climate change while advancing technology, space might be the only path forward. The alternative is building thousands more data centers on Earth and overwhelming every power grid on the planet. So let's recap. AI is growing faster than Earth's power grids can handle. Space offers unlimited solar energy with no night and no weather. Companies like StarCloud and Crusoe are already testing real hardware in orbit right now. Launch costs are dropping fast thanks to SpaceX and Blue Origin. Challenges remain. Radiation destroys electronics. Maintenance is nearly impossible. Distance creates delay. And costs are still astronomical. But if it works, space data centers could power the next generation of AI without destroying the planet. If it doesn't, we hit an energy wall that slows everything down. Bezos thinks we'll see gigawatt-scale stations in 10 to 20 years. The race is on, and the winner controls the compute infrastructure running the future. Whether you're excited or worried, it's happening right above your head, every single day. So here's the real question. Should the most powerful AI models be trained in space, beyond the reach of any single government? Or does that create a digital Wild West controlled by whoever owns the rockets?